Precious metals and cryptos are allies in freedom. And if there is a war that will be lost, it's going to be lost by cryptos first. Central banks do not hold cryptocurrency. They hold gold. I just think it is very prudent for anybody holding cryptocurrencies to convert some of your profits into gold and silver, especially silver, periodically. Silver is basically gold on steroids. The global war against cryptocurrencies continues. In 2017, in episode 8 of Hidden Secrets of Money, I said, today, mankind stands at a crossroads, and the path that humanity chooses will have a greater impact on our freedom and prosperity than any event in history. In 2008, a new technology was introduced that is so important that its destiny and the destiny of mankind are inextricably interlinked. It is so powerful that if captured and controlled, it could enslave all of humanity. But if allowed to remain free and flourish, it could foster unimaginable levels of peace and prosperity. It inverts the power structure and places control in, of one's destiny in the hands of the individual. Now that last sentence is really important because that is the whole reason for this war against cryptos. This inversion of the power structure threatens all of the powers that be, global powers, national powers, and all of the financial powers from Wall Street to your local bank. It's the reason for this war because all of those entities right now are looking for a change of underwear. <laughs> they waited too long. They dismissed Bitcoin when it was introduced as just some oddity, something to ignore that they were going to be fine. And they didn't actually start chasing this until just the past couple of years. So let's take a look at the timeline of this global war against crypto. This is from September of 2021. China declares all cryptocurrency transactions illegal. And along with that, millions upon millions of these mining rigs, these are specialized computers that are designed to do just two things. Run a ledger, you know, an accounting ledger, and then guess, uh, try and guess a really big number, trillions of times every second. They're just guessing, is this the number? Is this the number? Is this the number? No, it's not the number. Is this it? No. Is this it? No. Is this it? If they guess the number and they win, they get to produce the next block and they win a certain number of bitcoins. And it was extremely profitable, especially in China that had subsidized power. So the government was help paying for the power that was being burnt by these millions upon millions of mining rigs. So then if we jump to uh, June of 22, this is $60 billion in TerraCoins went up in algorithmic smoke. Now the TerraCoin was a stable coin that was offset by another coin. This is what made it uh, stable was Terra and Luna. And there was an, an algorithm that balanced these two things, but it had a flaw in the code. And when that flaw suddenly got exposed, very quickly, $60 billion vanished. Then, that was, sept that was June of 22. Then we get to November of 22, and the FTX uh, collapse. This is Sam Bankman-Fried. FTX came out of nowhere and grew to one of the largest crypto exchanges in a very, very a baffling period of time. I mean, it, was, it happened so quickly. There was really something like fishy about this. Uh, and uh, it collapsed, taking about $38 billion with it. They filed, filed for bankruptcy. Then in March of 23, so now we're getting up to the banking crisis, uh, you'll remember Signature Bank uh, was one of the banks that failed. Uh, but before the three banks that actually failed and were taken over by the FDIC, there was another one, Silvergate Bank, that, uh, that voluntarily closed their doors. They were the most crypto-friendly banks. But all of these banks, uh, Silvergate, Silicon Valley, uh, Signature, and First Republic were all crypto-friendly banks. Now, Years ago, people were asking, you know, I started investing in cryptos in 2014. 
And I started buying Bitcoin when it was a thousand and I kept on buying all the way down to $250. So there were weeks where I was able to buy four Bitcoins in a, in, you know, every week. Um, so uh, the, back when people would say, well, isn't the government going to stop this? Aren't they going to make Bitcoin illegal? And aren't they going to uh, uh, make Bitcoin go away? No, they can't make Bitcoin go away. It's a distributed ledger that's all over the planet. And all it takes is one computer running the mine, you know, one mining rig, and it still exists. But what they can do is they can block all of the on and off ramps to be able to convert your dollars into Bitcoin and then Bitcoin back into dollars so that you can buy a house or a car. So Signature Bank was one of those banks. And when it was taken over, um, it was the part of the rules were that it couldn't be used as a intermediary for crypto. Then uh, this is uh, April of 2023. Elizabeth Warren wants the police at your door in 2024 if you have a crypto wallet. Now, if I don't know if you know what a crypto wallet is, but they can exist on a cell phone. They can exist on a computer browser. They can exist on a, a little uh, USB plug-in uh, for your computer. Uh, so they can exist. You can actually have a crypto wallet by writing down a bunch of seed phrases or a, your private key on a piece of paper. And you have this wallet with whatever crypto in it, even these numbers on a piece of paper. But Elizabeth Warren uh, wants to introduce this bill, which will be co-sponsored by Senator Roger Marshall, uh, that making crypto wallets have to comply with anti-money anti laundering standards. Now, this means that she either does not understand the technology or she does understand the technology, and this is a Trojan horse, to get a, um, a bill passed for security reasons, national security reasons, that will pretty much end uh, cryptocurrencies in the United States if this passed, because it's making them uh, comply with the same standards that Western Union would have to comply with to transfer currencies. But what that does is uh, when Warren instigated the bill, uh, the quiet part she is not saying out loud and that Marshall doesn't seem to understand is that this blunt application of rules for Western Union when applied to entrepreneur computer coders, the people that develop these wallets, doesn't work. Uh, that can't, they can't comply and she knows it. Uh, this bill is a Trojan horse designed to destroy the crypto markets under the false guise of pro-national security bill. Uh, it's a smart strategy. Convince national security conservatives that this is an answer to a perceived problem, particularly members with little background knowledge of how cryptos work, then let crypto development die off because that is what would happen. The legislation also seeks to outright ban crypto privacy tools. If the vision of Bitcoin as a means of payment will ever be realized, it needs to be private. Without privacy tools that would be banned by this legislation, every time you use Bitcoin to pay for a coffee, which nobody does because the, co the cost of a transaction far exceeds the price of a cup of coffee, the barista can use your public key to look up your entire transaction history. Thieves and hackers can do the same. So what this law would do is open up the security and the privacy of cryptocurrencies to every thief and hacker that there is. So this is a bill to try and destroy cryptocurrencies in the United States. Moving on, uh, this is from May 5th. Argentina bans Bitcoin purchases. Uh, government is scared. And so Argentina is going through these, they're in, in the uh, hyperinflation phase, the beginning phases of a hyperinflation, but they're already in hyperinflation. And uh, so people are turning to other forms of medium of exchange than holding Argentine pesos. Uh, and then moving on, we've got uh, June 2nd, global regulators come for crypto. Critical mass of activity shows intent to rein in the industry. 
Uh, June 5th, SEC seeks to free, freeze Binance assets. Bitcoin dives 6%. Uh, also June 5th, Binance withdrawal on track to be the largest since crypto banking crisis. Then on June 6th, Binance U.S. affiliate, which is uh, Binance.us, uh, hit by net outflows of $1.43 billion since SEC lawsuit. And what is that SEC lawsuit? SEC sues Coinbase over exchange. So this is June 6th now over exchange and staking programs, stock drops 12%. So now it's Binance and Coinbase being sued by the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission. June 8th, Australia's Commonwealth Bank will partially restrict payments to crypto exchanges. This is that on and off ramp that I was talking about. They're going to block the conversion of, uh, of Aussie dollars into crypto and then back into Aussie dollars. And this is what they can do. This is their tactic. Uh, this is dated Monday, but this is June 12th, Monday, June 12th. Binance SEC lawsuit could be a preview of what Coinbase may face. Then we jump to June 9th. Binance.us suspends dollar deposits. Robinhood ends support for all tokens named in the Securities and Exchange lawsuit as securities. So there were a number of, uh, of cryptocurrency tokens that the Securities and Exchange Commission has now considers a security. Uh, so crypto.com winding down its U.S. Internet institutional business. Um, UN government friendly to tough crypto bank capital restrictions, negotiator says. The important paragraph in here is European Parliament favors uh, what one lawmaker has called prohibitive measures to isolate crypto from the banking system. Then this is June 10th, and these are some of the tokens that slid by 20% uh, after the SEC called these securities. Then Binance Nigeria unit. Uh, is ordered to halt illegal operations by securities watchdog. So this is Ni the Nigerian government telling uh, Binance Nigeria Limited to halt operations because it's following the Security and Exchange Commission's lead. Uh, then, just uh, June 15th, this is the other side <laughs> of the cryptocurrency coin, so to speak. BlackRock, one of the largest investment firms in the world with more than $8.5 trillion of assets under management, uh, is officially files for a spot Bitcoin ETF. So you will be able to invest in Bitcoin and sell and go back into dollars on your brokerage account. So this makes it very, very simple to go in and out of Bitcoin. So while the government is trying to ban Bitcoin, at the same time, they waited so long to take any action whatsoever that, uh, that it's really uh, a little bit too late because the major financial firms for the past roughly two years have been jumping on the crypto bandwagon trying to figure out how to get a piece of the action and not left behind. Uh, BlackRock may have found a way to get SEC approval for spot Bitcoin ETF. Now that was on the 16th of June. Then, this also the 16th of June, central banks successfully test over 30 central bank digital currency use cases, including offline payments. <laughs> and so this is also the other side of the coin. Could all of this crypto war be to delay the free market cryptos enough to where central bank digital currencies can take hold. I can, can central bank digital currencies overpower cryptocurrencies? Analyzing crypto regulators, CBDC threats. This is threats to central bank digital currencies. And the threat is free market ones such as Bitcoin, uh, Hashgraph, uh, and all of the others. Now, to connect all of these dots, I want to direct you back to something that I've directed you all toward before. This excellent 
uh, video done by Chris Martinson, the FTX scandal explained uh, the deeply troubling FTX facts and coincidences. Now, this is some masterful investigative reporting trying to connect the dots on what is going on. And everything that I just showed you in this video is all connected. So watch this video and see how everything I just covered is sort of an extension of all of this. The, there's evidence, you know, it's not proof, but there is evidence that Sam Bankman-Fried was sort of a dupe, uh, a, a pawn in all of this, and was sort of given FTX, that this crypto exchange that just came out of nowhere, that had some of the biggest investment funds in the world, such as BlackRock, investing in it with no due diligence. They didn't even uh, see that they were illegally transferring millions upon millions of dollars uh, to a division called Alhambra that was an exchange that was being run by some teenage girl with absolutely no experience and completely clueless as to the financial world who lost billions of dollars. And, uh, so the, and, and then all of the uh, campaign contributions and the political bribes. And uh, so uh, this, this rabbit hole goes really deep and it looks like this, that the FTX collapse was almost engineered so that the powers that be could take advantage of it while it was growing and big and then dump it and, uh, you know, sl dump it and burn uh, one person, just making uh, that person that was uh, pretty uh, <laughs> naive, I think, and make him sort of a scapegoat so that they could do severe damage to the whole crypto community. And then we have uh, this Wall Street Journal article, Weary Bitcoin Investors Chase Shiny New Object, Gold. Now, I've been invested in, in Bitcoin since it was since 2014, and it was a thousand bucks, it fell to 250. I kept on buying, I kept on buying. But whenever I was in profit in my cryptocurrencies, I would take some of those profits and convert it into precious metals. And for some reason, crypto investors, a lot of them, see precious metals as the enemy. And they are not the enemy. Precious metals and cryptos are allies in freedom. And if there is a war that will be lost, it's going to be lost by cryptos first. Central banks do not hold cryptocurrency. They hold gold. Uh, and so uh, I just think it is very prudent for anybody holding cryptocurrencies to convert some of your profits into gold and silver, especially silver, periodically. Silver is basically gold on steroids. It's leveraged. So eventually you're going to see profits not as spectacular as some of the big crypto runs. But most of the people that invest in cryptos have major losses when they buy near a top and then see them crash by 90% or more. So uh, I hope this was enlightening. Please investigate this and see through the fraud of this contrived war against cryptos and convert some of your crypto into precious metals. I want to thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. At goldsilver.com we have a price match guarantee, free shipping, global storage options, and phenomenal customer service. Thanks for making goldsilver.com your bullion dealer.